properly, literally do it live. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Here we go. We're going to record a podcast, Allison. I think we should record a podcast. That's a fantastic idea. I do have to say first, before you hit the button, that Jenny clearly hates me. Actually, she's being the soup Nazi because I said I wanted to be on when Apple's announcement went on. She said, no, you'll be on when Samsung announcement is on. <laughs> she doesn't hate you. <laughs> She's she's trying to to give you something to challenge you. Yeah, you know, Apple's too easy. That's a softball. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you for tuning in to the Daily Tech News Show. If you would like to listen live, press 1 now. If you would like to watch live, press 2 now. If you would like to download later, press 3 now. If you would like to support, go to bit.ly slash helpdtns. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for today, which is Wednesday, September 3rd, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today from the Silicast at the podfeet.com network. Can I call it a network, Allison Sheridan? <laughs> a network of one. Yes, yeah. that'll work. <laughs> well, a network is really supposed to be like, you know, radio stations broadcasting to each other anyway. So none of, none of this stuff's really a network. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, even though it is Samsung Day, and you have an ever so slight Mac bias, just an ever so slight Mac bias, but I but I've been keeping it in check. I just bought myself a Windows phone, so you know, just keep right. it, keeping oh, it. Oh yeah, you were talking right. to me about that before. Uh, you you bought it to to try out, you know, and just see what Windows Phone is like. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, and uh, frighteningly, I don't hate this phone. I mean, it's pretty nice. It's the you Nokia and, you, and, you and Rankin is another one who is a well known slight Apple uh, fan and went to Windows Phone and loves it. Yeah, he and I get in fights about that, about whose camera's better and that sort of thing. But uh, for $92, you can try out uh, Windows Phone with a Nokia 635, no contract. Not Why not? Bad, not a bad way to go if you got 92 to spare. Uh, first of all, Facebook was down for 15 minutes. OMG, OMG, OMG. Uh, Twitter changed font and buttons. Ah! Uh, and now actual headlines. <laughs> Samsung announced new products, including a virtual headset at IFA in Berlin. The Gear VR is one of them, a joint creation with Facebook's Oculus VR that can track your head movements with a gyroscope and accelerometer and give you a 96-degree field of view. That's pretty close to what the actual Oculus Rift headset does. The Gear VR only comes with sensors and a focal adjustment lens. The screen and processing have to be provided by the new Note 4 and only the Note 4, which was also announced at this press conference. The Note 4 is a 5.7-inch phone with a 1440p Super AMOLED display coming in October. A variant of the Note 4 called the Note Edge was also announced. It has a screen that bends and wraps partway down the right side. That's meant to give you notifications. It could be used as a taskbar by some applications. Uh, they didn't give us a release date on that one. Did they give any pricing on any of that, Tom? I didn't see any. I didn't see any. Uh, it may be floating out there still, but I didn't, I, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Okay. Well, at the same time, Sony announced some new phones as well. The Xperia Z3 has a 5.2-inch 1080p display, a 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, and a 3,100 milliamp hour battery that Sony says will last two days. <laughs> sure it will. It's also water resistant, which I, I think is actually a brilliant idea. I think they've done that before. The very similar Xperia Z3 Compact is a little smaller at 4.6 inches, so bigger than the iPhone is still called a Compact, and uh, it only has a 720p display. The snappily named Xperia Z3 Tablet Compact, not to be confused with the Z3 Compact, is an 8-inch 1920 by 1200 device with a 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon 801, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 4500 milliamp hour battery, and LTE. Sony also announced a fitness tracker with an e-ink screen called Smart Band Talk and a fitness watch with built-in uh, built Bluetooth, GPS, and 4 gigabytes of storage called the SmartWatch 3. The watch comes this autumn for 229 euro. Yeah, it's a little pricey. I mean, <laughs> it's not pricey for these smartwatches, but these smartwatches are still a little pricey for me. I well, guess. 229 euros, like four thousand dollars US, right? No, How no, that's, 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 more, that's close to 300. Yeah, yeah. I I like the idea of having something I don't have to pair to my phone and do fitness tracking with. I, you know, it's not like Sony's the only one that could ever do that, but um, yeah. Looks now cheap. the Z3 uh, has a cool camera. It's got a 12,800 ISO, but it's T-Mobile only. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, it'll come to well, Sony 
typically delays launching in the U.S. until after the rest of the world, but okay. T-Mobile will get it at the same time as the rest of the world, and they'll eventually, oh. I think the plan is, they'll eventually bring it to everybody else. So it's but, sort of like T-Mobile gets it ahead, not everyone yeah. else gets it late. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good for John Ledger. And only on a contract, according to what I've heard. Oh. Yeah. The unofficial Apple weblog points out that despite Apple recommending all users enable two-factor authentication, it doesn't protect all your Apple services. In fact, it seems to be designed to only protect your credit card information. Two-factor authentication is used on Apple ID support, the My Apple, D, My Apple ID management console, or making a purchase in the iTunes App Store or iBooks stores from a new device. That means your photos are not one of the things that you get extra protection from two-factor authentication. Furthermore, if an attacker has your username and password for an iCloud account, and they'd have to have those things first of all. Uh, software from Elcomsoft could be used to extract files from an online backup, even an old one, according to the BBC. So uh, that may be, a lot of people are starting to think that may be how they got into the old backups and, and stole pictures that were supposedly deleted. Yeah, I understand that uh, some of what was stolen was videos, and videos are not in PhotoStream or mm -hmm. in, in the iCloud, unless it's iCloud Backup, so that probably was it. I like the way the BBC went after this because they did an experiment. They went and got a clean new PC they'd never connected to, authenticated to uh, iCloud, downloaded all the photos, and were never asked for the two-factor authentication. I th wasn't that Tua? Was that unofficial? Oh, was that Tua who did it? Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, we, yeah, we had, had both stories going. right there. But Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they, they, they tried it. They tried it out. And two-factor authentication is coming to more services. I don't think it's bad of Apple to say users should choose strong passwords and turn on two-factor authentication. But a lot of people are saying that made it sound like two-factor authentication would have prevented this, and it wouldn't. Uh, and it, yeah. it, it's it's just it's still amusing to me that we're getting like finally aware of these very prevalent security issues, which are not only Apple's because some naked pictures of Jennifer Lawrence got out on the internet. Right, right. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time with my in-laws trying to help them figure out how to navigate Glad all this. Glad you said in-laws, because I thought you were going to say you'd spent a lot of time with the pictures. <laughs> No, no. And uh, I liked what you said yesterday about using LastPass is it, what I want to do is use this as an illustration of exactly what I've been trying to tell them is had those people had long, you know, high high entropy passwords, they would not have had this problem because an, offline, an online attack scenario wouldn't be done looking for them yet. Yeah, and there's always a vulnerability, right? There's sure. always something else that can happen. So it's just a matter of trying to reduce the possibility to as close to zero as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is a panacea, though. Yeah, they were really upset when I said nothing's perfectly secure. And then they yeah. said, well, you mean LastPass isn't? And I said, no. Your door locks is. aren't perfectly secure. For There's a human say. involved? Nope. Yeah. All right, let's see. TechCrunch reports on Asus announcing its first Android Wear device called the Asus ZenWatch. It has a sandwich-like design with a rose gold-colored middle layer. It's not pink. It's rose gold, so it's actually quite attractive, and stainless steel top and bottom with a brush surface around the face. It features a heart rate sensor on the underside and a number of gesture controls and preloaded features like unlocking your phone by tapping the watch and covering the face to mute. It is, it is expected to sell for 199 euro later this year. Now, this is probably the prettiest looking watch I've seen, but I noticed almost every site didn't have an arm in it. But by itself, it's really, really attractive. But I was able to find over on Tech, uh, Tech Hive a picture, and it's absolutely giant. I mean, it's like 30%. Oh, is it really? It's like 30% wider than the person's wrist. And it looks like a man's wrist, actually. So it is. Oh, it wasn't like some bird bone person? No, I'm afraid not. But I was really liking the way it looked. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It arms. is pretty. They, the the shots they've had of it. I haven't really seen it run through its paces, but uh, Recode reports Box announced plans to offer a lot more businessy things so they can sell a cloud platform to companies in like insurance, finance, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, industries like that. Uh, if buzzwords like industry specific services and workflow get your blood boiling, and admit it. We know it does for some of you. Uh, it's worth looking into. Box Workflow Tool will try to streamline collaboration starting in 2015. And Box for Industries will be the Box platform customized and designed for specific businesses, uh, such as retail, healthcare, media, and entertainment. Ars Technica reports on Toshiba's Chromebook, which has a 13.3-inch 1366 by 768 display and 2 gigabytes of RAM for $250. However, if you shell out for the 330 model, you get 4 gigabytes of RAM and a 1080p 
IPS display. Both models use the dual-core Baytrail-based Atom chip, the Celeron N2840. It comes in three colors, charcoal, aqua, and rose. And I'm pretty sure rose in this case is pink. <laughs> yeah, it's black, blue, and pink, people. Yeah, there you go. Um, that chip doesn't have a really good graphics coprocessor, right? It's not like using a Haswell? Uh, no, it's 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 a mobile. It's a it's a it's it's last generation's mobile. It's Bay Trail. Um, so it's not terrible. No, it's not terrible, but it's a little bit of a disappointment for folks who are looking at these Haswell Chromebooks and expecting, hey, is Toshiba going to come out with another Haswell one? Yeah, they didn't. But but they did come out for three hundred thirty dollars. Yeah, three hundred thirty dollars for four gigs of RAM, which doesn't sound that much to most desktop users, but for a Chromebook, it's actually really good. Reuters reports that Verizon will pay $7.4 million to settle a U.S. FCC investigation into improper privacy notifications. The investigation, which began in 2006, found that wireless company, the wireless company, in this case Verizon, failed to properly notify 2 million new customers of their privacy rights in their first bill before using their information for marketing purposes. Uh, in addition to the settlement, Verizon also agreed to send opt-out notices on every bill. Well, that won't get annoying, getting that same. <laughs> and people will st stop uh, noticing it because it comes on every bill. But all right, I'm gl you know, keep their feet to the fire. That's good. I guess so. Do you think any of us would have read it anyway? Mm, you know, you'd be surprised. It's like spam. Just enough people would have read it that Verizon to tell us to feared look. doing it. So, yeah. <laughs> At least somebody would have told us. Well, CNET passes along an IDC report that shipments of phone-tablet hybrids are expected to surpass laptop shipments this year and sales of traditional tablets next year. IDC expects electronic companies to ship 175 million phablets this year compared to 170 million tablets. Are, sorry, laptops. And next year, they project shipments of 318 million phablets compared to 233 million tablets. IDC defines a phablet as a smartphone with a screen size of 5.5 to 6.99 inches. Remember when the first note came out and everyone was like, that's ridiculous. Who would ever want a 5-inch phone? Now 5-inch doesn't even fit the definition Jeez. of a tablet, of a phablet, excuse me. I find this one a little hard to believe. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that there were uh, statistics about the iPhone 5S still beating out all of the... Actually, it was the 5C was beating out all of the the uh, flagship phones, the big, giant Samsungs, yeah, individually. Yeah, but you gotta, you got you to remember, that's an unfair... You've got two models to choose from for the iPhone, and you've got hundreds of models to choose from in Android. Okay, so even so if the 5C is is beating out most of the other Android phones overall, it's probably Additive. the larger sizes that are that huh. are winning. Okay. And it is interesting to me though. I am never really compelled to get a bigger screen for my phone. I actually I actually like the big screen on the tablet. I want a 10 inch tablet most of the time, unless I'm reading, because then I want the lighter uh, screen on my Nexus 7. But uh, hmm. it's, it's interesting this phablet crowd I was on an uh, Apple-centric podcast the other day, and I asked the three men that were on the call with me, I said, so if Apple comes out with a 4.7 and a 5.5, and let's just take for grins and giggles that you're going to buy one of them, which one are you going to buy? And all three of them said, I don't want a bigger phone than what I have right now. And, and one guy said, I do have little girly hands, but the other two seem to be normal size. Yeah, I don't need a 5.5. I'm also very skeptical that a 5.5 inch is coming. I know that that's been the rumor from yeah. lots of quarters, but I just... That one I don't buy. I think it will be 4.7, though. I don't want it to, so I don't have to decide. <laughs> Time for some news from you. These are submitted by our folks on the subreddit, as are many stories in Daily Tech News Show. Go to uh, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and submit some stories for, for of your own. Uh, and if you haven't been in a while, just stop by and do some voting. Let us know what stuff you're interested in. You get to help program the show. Silent World 07 pointed out the Krebs on Security report about a possible credit card breach at Home Depot. Credit card breaches are unfortunately not very common these days. Home Depot not operates very uncommon? 20 not very uncommon, thank you. <laughs> Home Depot operates 2,200 stores in the U.S. and 287 elsewhere, though the extent of the breach is not yet known. It could be a lot bigger than even the Target one, which was $40 million. Uh, Still, most people don't keep their nude photos at Home Depot since it's a hardware store, so it isn't getting the kind of attention other breachers get. Uh, Home Depot says that it is working with banks and law enforcement agencies to investigate reports of suspicious activity. I actually like reports like this because it is something you can point to and say, it's not because you're using the cloud that you're going to get hacked. You're going to get hacked anyway, no matter what you're doing. Right. And there's certain things you should do to help minimize uh, that potentiality, certainly. 
Right. Uh, right. But yeah, um, it's it's not new. Sadly, it's not. Enjoy new. today. Yeah, you just kind of going. Oh, okay. <laughs> SP Sheridan passes along the Verge report about the nice mobile wallet app whose developers picked out a nice name, only to find out that another organization was already using that name. The developers of the ISIS mobile wallet announced in June they would change the name of the app to avoid being confused with the violent Islamic terrorist group. Today they announced the app will now be called SoftCard. Uh, excuse me, SoftCard. Uh, SoftBank's on the line, and they are not happy with your name change. <laughs> also, SoftCard could mean all kinds of things <laughs> that I'm not sure. But all right, uh, yeah, they they want to avoid confusion. I get that. Uh, it's it's one of those things that eventually ISIS is not going to mean that group anymore. Um, but these are the times we live in. So I would get away from it too. Yeah, I don't I, I don't blame. And that is a look at the headlines. Uh, if you like tech history, I've teamed up with Scott Johnson to deliver some to you uh, monthly as an ebook. We have 11 of the 12 months covered, actually. We only have one more month to go before you can collect the whole set. Uh, you get a monthly look at everything that happened. Well, not everything, but three or four things that happened every day uh, at TomMerrittBooks.com. Go check it out. Uh, tech History September, obviously, is the most recent one. It's got illustrations from Scott in there. Uh, it's got all of the things that, that make technology spin going all the way back sometimes even into the the 1400s and 600s so check it out 99 cents for each one or you can buy the whole chronology of tech history although that one doesn't have the illustrations at tommeritbooks.com or just search amazon what tech history happened in 600 bc um do <laughs> i have 80? a copy close to me i could tell you in a snap just but sit there and look it up <laughs> yeah i'd have to load the page i don't remember it off the top of my head and you know aristotle wheel. greeks it was the greeks i'm sure uh while i find that out tell me what you think of this vr headset like i was very skeptical when i first heard the rumor about this in the summer uh sort of the leak ahead of it like oh really samsung's gonna come up with who would this be good for but now seeing how they did it i get like okay this is better than google's cardboard because not only does it actually strap to your head you, you don't have to hold it but it does focal uh it's got the focal length in there which can be important, right? You don't want to have to mess with it on the phone when the phone's already mounted inside there. And uh, it also has the accelerometer and the GPS uh, built in, or I'm sorry, GPS, gyroscope built in so that it can do head tracking. Now it can't do depth. So you can't lean forward and lean into the scene yet. So uh, it's got it's got its own, own uh, uh, gimbals and that sort of thing. I mean, the um, the rotation is through the headset not using the phone? Yeah, the headset itself has an accelerometer and a, a gyroscope, and then it feeds that information to the phone, and the phone does all the processing. Okay, okay, so just the gra it's just the output device, it's just the graphics at that point. Yeah. Do you think the strategy that Samsung has gone after where they design something and then they say, but it only works with this single thing is yeah. going to work? I thought about that, and for some reason, it doesn't bother me as much with this one. And I think it's like because this is not an accessory that we all could use like a watch, right? Watches okay. have been around forever. And so having a watch that came out and only worked with a limited number of Galaxy phones felt kind of dumb. Like, well, I'm certainly not going to use it because I don't have that phone, and not everybody who has that phone is going to want to watch, so you really limited your market. This, they're very much pitching as a, an early or an early adopter device, and to me, it's a great way to sell the Note 4 because somebody says, well, I want to be in on this, so I'm going to get one of these, uh, these VR helmets, and therefore I'm going to buy a Note 4 because I'm an enthusiast into virtual reality. When the first uh, announcements I saw about this, I didn't understand that they'd actually teamed up with Oculus. So I, I, I haven't used any of these, but I know that Oculus is way awesome and really, really cool. So that makes it all of a sudden really, really cool. I thought it was just, oh, now they're copying Oculus and here's their version of cardboard except made out of plastic and yeah, metal. Yeah, with a strap that holds it on your bag. No, I, I thought the same thing when I heard about this uh, earlier. You're right, Allison. Uh, but this turns out to have a lot more to it. And I think that's to Samsung's credit for being willing to include Oculus and say, yeah, let's partner on this. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And if by removing the display from the cost, 
makes that sound cheaper, even though you still have to buy the Note 4 because you're going to buy it because it's huge and awesome and you're looking for a waffle to hold your head to make a phone call, uh, then you say, oh, well, now it's only, say, $300 more to add this headset. Or I don't know. It, it will, of course, depend on how much that thing costs, too. Yeah, exactly. The details are going to be in the price, which we don't know yet. Uh, also, the Note Edge doesn't seem to work with this, even though it's mostly the Note 4. Now, I may be wrong. They may come out and go, oh, no, the Note Edge would work too. But because it has that wraparound thing on the side, maybe that's why they don't want to include it in compatibility with the Gear it, VR. It might actually cause a problem. So just in case people didn't remember exactly what it is, when you're looking at the at the Galaxy Note Edge, it's or Note 4 Edge, I think. I don't know how many adjectives you need in there. But a sliver down the right hand of the screen is kind of bent around to the, to the right, and you have other menus there. So you can say, uh, I forget what all the examples they did, but they had a bunch of different icons they could show you could have in there. Kind of a, a situational awareness kind of a thing that you could have down the side. And I'm wondering whether when that's put in its horizontal position in the VR, whether that would you know, cause a strip that would take you out of the, the experience because it's not going to be at the same focal length. Maybe. Yeah, that would that that would make sense that that could that could mess that up, and that's why they don't want to include it. Now that, but that's another question. Like forgetting integrating with the Gear VR, this Note Edge with this infinity pool effect, where the screen just wraps <laughs> all the way off the end, and it's going to have task bars and Twitter notifications and stuff. Which when I when I first heard about this, I thought, well, I, that sounds like a gimmick that's going to look really cool in a demonstration, uh, but it's just not going to be practical in my life. And now. To, again, today, after hearing the announcement at IFA, I look at this and I say, that looks like a gimmick that's really good in a demonstration, and I don't see how it's going to be practical in my <laughs> daily life. I wonder. Um, it could also get weird if you're left-handed, if yeah, you because well, that means your fingers are going to be right on that piece. Although, uh, and Gadget's uh, reviewer pointed out that, frankly, not many people hold these these size phones with one hand anyway. So I'll, I'll give Ben Gilbert credit for at least saying, you know, how often are you holding a 5.7 inch display in one hand? I wonder though, even let's say you're looking at two hands, whether the inside of your palm might be touching that and triggering things. Yeah, that that could be an issue, in which case the left hand would be better because then you could just do, do, do. Yeah, to yeah. But I, I, now does this come with a strap to hold it around your neck because it's so big and heavy? I, That's I an know. accessory, man. That's, oh, okay. You should start, you should trip first to apply for a patent and then go <laughs> go to market because uh, that's that's going to be uh, something people will want I Definitely. guess. no i i think the edge is gimmicky i i'll i'm willing to be proven wrong you know somebody may come up with the killer app for that but i just think it's like eh, they're looking for all kinds of ways to differentiate form factor these days because there aren't many left uh <laughs> so good on them for trying We'll now see. they also came out with the uh, with the, another version of the watch, and the only thing I could uh, pick out of the the reading that I did was that it now has 3G, so it can do things without uh, without the phone, and you could peck yeah. out little messages. Was it with a stylus or? Yeah, this is all, this is all the stuff they announced last week too. So I, I wasn't impressed then. I'm not any more impressed now. Although it does have Tizen, so hey, Tizen's useful for something. Yay. Wait, it's got Tizen, not Android? Uh, they, they have a Tizen version, apparently. Okay. Long yeah. live Tizen? And it works with Android. So oh, There you go. What do you think of the Sony stuff? Now, we talked about this a little in the headlines. Uh, the Xperia Z3, the Xperia Z3 Compact, the Xperia Z3 Tablet Compact, not announced was the Xperia, Xperia Z3 Tablet, which already exists. So you can have all <laughs> your devices made up of four words, five words. I would like to know whether the audience feels the way I do when they hear the specs on these things, like the uh, the teacher in, in Peanuts, you know? It's like when I'm saying, oh, it's uh, 720p, 1280 by 724 with, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, wah, 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 wah. It's like, it, okay. if, you know, these, it's, this is Sony's problem. They make very nice phones, They're beautiful. but they don't stand out. Nobody yeah. looks at a Sony Xperia Z3 and thinks, have you seen that because of X, Y, and Z? And I don't know what it is that they don't do. The, it seems like water resistance is, is their big thing. Like, uh, this is great for fishermen and divers. Apparently. Well, and people who drop their phones in toilets. Up to 30 minutes and one and a half meters in depth. So, yeah, as long as you get it out of the toilet quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, or, you, have up, uh, you have up to thirty minutes. Dump a gin and tonic on it. You know, whatever. You know, I, I, a lot of people have water damage, so I, I don't think that should be taken too lightly. I remember seeing a display at All Things D where they had uh, they had a, a water just squirting onto a phone in a display, and that was 
very, very memorable to me. I know that was Sony. I know it was this Xperia line, and I know it was waterproof. So all of that stuff stood out for me. Yeah. Um, not being an Android user, it's, uh, it didn't stand out enough, but it was still, they're, like you say, they're very, very pretty. I have to say, though, the Gear VR is the one thing out of the day that, that impressed me. Uh, and the Note 4 it looks great. If you want a 5.7-inch phone, which not everybody does, but a lot of people do, I think I think that one looks good. Everything else, okay. I, I didn't think there was any real, like, you know, the smartwatch 3 from Sony. It, the, it's okay. the S Pen is cooler. The S Pen has more Oh, the Blanc pushy Mont S Pen. Mont Blanc, yeah. yeah Mont Blanc. It, it had more pushy stuff to act more like a, a real stylus, you know, like a pencil, yeah. like you mm -hmm. could draw with it and stuff. But if it that's the best you can say... <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody using the S Pen to just interact with their phone other than giving it to their kid to draw? Uh, other than PR people showing how the S Pen works, no. Yeah. I, I don't see a lot of Can't these devices that. around, but um, yeah. I know my... Uh, actually, I've got this fabulous gardener who redesigned my backyard, and he was great because he would take a picture. We were, would be gone, and he would take a picture of a plant or something, and then he would write on it. But he was writing on it with his finger. He oh, wasn't using yeah. a stylus, and he had a Galaxy Note. Interesting. All right, let's take a quick look at the calendar. Uh, Motorola will unveil new smartphones and uh, the Moto 360, we expect, on uh, September 4th. That's tomorrow. Also, the Xbox One to launch in Japan on September 4th as well. So, yay, PS4 gets some competition in their homeland. Our pick of the day comes from Tom Betts. He was listening to our Dragon Con discussion of the potential risks of AI, and that brought to mind a daily comic strip he follows called Questionable Content. Betts writes, A slice-of-life comic set in an alternate universe present-day Northampton, Massachusetts, where self-aware artificial intelligence has existed for decades and AIs live among humans as voluntary, cooperative, or paid partners and companions. Uh, Jeff Jacques QC follows the lives of slacker 20-something Martin Reed and his friends, family, and acquaintances. I really love the way the strip treats the many variants of AI as commonplace, integrating them into a world that is very like the one we already live on, or live in. It's like Snoopy is the AI, right? We, we've seen this with pets and animals, like just getting treated like normal people, even though they shouldn't be talking. So why not do it with AI? I like it. I like it. This sounds fabulous. Got to yeah. go check that out. Check it out, questionablecontent.net. Uh, and send us your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Finally, our message of the day comes from another Jay Martin, a DTNS Rochester, New York regional boss. Thank you, another Jay Martin. Did he approve your vacation for next week? I hope so. Uh, my vacation request is still on your desk, another Jay Martin. Uh, read, an read an email over here, boss. On yesterday's show, you talked about the YouTube donation button being rolled out. I am wondering if, when the donation button is enabled, does that affect the ads that show up in any way? If a user donates, do the ads get removed? I'm guessing a lot of viewers would donate just to have the ads removed on a channel. On the other hand, if ads aren't removed, would that hurt donations? I would think there are plenty of viewers that expect their donation would give them direct access to the content. Thanks again. No, it doesn't do that. <laughs> uh, another Jay Martin. Now, I could, as a YouTube channel operator, in aggregate say, if I get enough donations every month, I'll turn off ads on my YouTube videos, which I mentioned as a, as a possibility yesterday. But no, I don't, I don't think it's one's tied to the other in any way. I thought I heard on a show, and I don't remember which show, that, that YouTube was talking about doing something like a $10 a month thing where you could have no ads. But that's like uh, there is there is a YouTube. subscription service that is separate from this donation thing, right? right? Uh, right. And certain creators are testing that right now, where I can say, yeah, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get certain videos that others don't, and you can have ad free. Uh, so that's oh. that's where that happens. Oh, but I thought this was a YouTube thing that they were talking about, maybe haven't implemented or really released or anything. Maybe it was all rumor, but no, that there it, would be a monthly subscription to YouTube. Oh no, not to the entire YouTube. Okay. I don't think. I hadn't heard that. Maybe I dreamt it. Yeah. Uh, I missed it if, if that was rumored. But I know there is an a, there is actual subscription program for, for high-end creators out okay. there that's being tried out. Um, so it may have just been that. Okay. Man, can you... That's like, that's like when they had the YouTube April Fool's event and they said YouTube has just been a reality show this whole time. Like, <laughs> turning off ads across all of YouTube would be really... I feel like they'd have to charge a lot. That's a lot of... Well, I don't know. 
Hard yeah. to say. Uh, well, and how would that work for you? Think of the micro payments they would have to do to compensate the people who had ads on and then didn't get ads. That's just that would be monstrous. Well, I didn't dream it. Uh, Tech Meme has an article from Liam Spradlin at Android Police. It Googled to launch YouTube Music Key, a ten dollars oh, yeah. per month totally, ad-free subscription service. That's, that's totally different. About. Yeah. Okay. So the music. Never service. mind. Gotcha. That but makes sense. Hallucinated it because then they're getting the labels on board, except for that one that's like no way, uh, and getting them to say, yeah, your ads will be turned off, but we'll have a subscription channel. And that's a more limited number of creators, in that case. All right, so you aren't crazy. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, maybe you're crazy, but that's not why. Not proof yet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, twittercom slash podfeet if you'd like to follow Allison. Uh, she does some great podcasts, including Nosilicast at podfeet.com. Anything coming up to let folks know about? We're actually having a lot of fun in a series now we're calling Taming the Terminal. Uh, Bart Bouchatz is on my show from bartb.ie every other week, and he's been taking us tiny little baby steps. We're actually up to, I think we just did episode, no, this weekend will be episode 20 of N, uh, where he started, I, uh, the way I like to, uh, the analogy I used was when I learned how to ride a horse in the first entire hour, all we did was sit in the barn and post just went up and down on the horse and it's like that's what it felt like for the longest time but now we're starting to roll where you know all starting to get comfortable with some stuff and we're playing with scripts and throwing scripts in an automator and he's just been taking us these little baby steps along and it's a it's a pretty fun way to learn how to maybe take a little more control of your computer it's fun oh that's uh, fantastic we'll see I didn't know you're doing that. a lot of it applies to uh, uh, Linux of course yeah, yeah, because well, because it's it's a Unix-based Unix. operating system underneath yeah. there. So. And he's real careful to say this piece you can only do this on the Mac, but everything else is on Linux. So yeah, it's really fun. Very cool. Check that out. Podfeet.com. And thank you to our patrons, uh, 4,254 of you supporting the show. You're the people who make the show possible. Thank you for seeing value in the show. It's our value for value model that we uh, we lifted off Adam Curry, uh, where we hope that the show is valuable to you. And if you can afford it and see some value, you can give a little value back. Patreon.com slash Ace Detect. By the way, note to the patrons, if you're like, hey, you didn't charge me yet this month, Patreon was rolling out a little few new features to their payment collection system. So that should be coming shortly. Uh, but if you want to know all the ways to donate, go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate. By Don't the way, forget, if you were a yes? Patreon, you would have gotten a letter that told you that pa Patrick Beja is now on staff at DTNS. That's right. It felt very special to have that letter oh, right in my good. inbox. Good, that's why I wrote it. <laughs> Don't forget, you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Give us a call, 512-59-DAILY, 512-593-2459. Our show's live at mobile.alphageekradio.com, and our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. Don't forget, tomorrow's my last day before the vacation. Uh, it'll be a early show, if you like to listen live, at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time with just Justin Robert Young, uh, and then Justin Robert Young and Molly Wood take over the show on Friday. It's anarchy. Yeah, I know. We'll see you then. Vote oh, for titles. I just noticed the number one is little girly hands. <laughs> the person who said that is going to get Actually, I like a lot of them. <laughs> Let's get high on password entropy is good, too. Oh. <laughs> and uh, no nude photos at Home Depot. Although I don't know if that's strictly accurate. I haven't checked. Technically. Maybe you can get digital picture frames or something. Yeah, or they're just, you know, there's a guy. You go back to the the gardening section and you ask for Al. Uh, I don't know how that works. Can you vote more than once? It's the first I, time I've actually used it. Yes, but it's not. Uh, it's I mean, it's poor form. It, yeah, don't you don't get in there and spam. Somebody <laughs> did that one day, and then they felt really bad. Well, I remember doing some multi-voting stuff at work where people would give everything a ten, and it's like, okay, you just erased your vote. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We, we uh, when we bought a car, the uh, the guy explained to us, and and I think this is perfectly fair of him to explain. He's like, look. I'm not telling you how to how to rate us, but if we get anything but a 10, we have to explain why. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that, so basically you have a two-point scale here. 
is what you know the same thing I've been told with Uber if they get uh, I give uh, somebody a four because the guy had his seat reclined a little bit and I didn't even ask him to not recline a seat into my lap and I gave him a four it's like yeah that's all why and I got this letter from Uber going oh my god I'm so sorry oh this is horrible we will reprimand him immediately it's like, you're like well, no what? this is a four yeah but yeah. if they get less than a four point seven they're fired they're fired yeah that's what one of the guys told me over what period of time is that true though some guy told you that i don't know if a driver yeah but maybe he's also working for lyft (laughs) well or he really wanted a five i mean i've been afraid to give less than a five you know it's great inflation you can vote for more than two point scale you can vote for more than one title that's perfectly okay oh i wanted you to know you just can't vote for one title multiple times. Oh, that is what I meant. Yeah. Thank you, Tinvec, for clarifying. Uh, what are you liking, Jenny? Title-wise, I mean. Um, I like ice cream. I like pretzels. <laughs> no, I, I meant titles. I meant titles. Oh. Are those titles? Wait, I mean, those might be titles. I don't know. All right, let's see. Uh... I like Let's Get High on Password Entropy. I know. I like that one, too. Uh, it has a very, like, Tom Robbins sort of feel to it. Uh, All the best. Titles do. Um, well, I'm looking at these, and, and that really might be the one. I mean, if I had more brain to think about some clever thing involving phablets, I would... It just wasn't interesting enough. <laughs> so I'm that's my. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not into phablets or smartwatches. I'm starting to feel left behind by this generation. Did they say what size? Did they say was a phablet in that in that I five point seven? Oh, okay. So Apple could say? come out with a five point five and never call it a phablet. Then oh well, they'll never call it a phablet anyway. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Have Good you ever noticed Patrick, the uh, the way. Jenny effect in effect in title voting? What's that? She says something and it goes up? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm muting because I feel like you can almost definitely hear my husband's conference call going on in the background. I don't hear it. No. Do you hear it? Oh, right. As soon as she said that, I heard ear, ear, ear. About that, well, that loud. That's my stomach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of sky above you. I heard, when it gets I to do. 100, sell. Yeah. <laughs> if only. Yeah. Um... All right, so I read a. Did you, I didn't put it in the list to be considered because it wasn't like the strictest text story, but I tweeted out this thing about um, about a, a, a company that is related to Palantir or Palantir, depending on how you want to pronounce it. The NSA stuff that is also being used to basically make really rich people even richer by analyzing large data sets in the financial market. And oh, I found okay. it so amazingly depressing. When you read it, it's it's really depressing because it's just like, it's basically now like, instead of spying on you, we're just going to make like a lot of really people wealthy. So is it- I was... I was rereading that, that one again. Is that spin, though, or is that, like, it's so expensive well, if they to can use? downgrade it, yeah, it's, it's 50000 to a $1 million oh, per customer. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty expensive. But uh, uh, I was thinking, I was like, well, how long does it take something like that to end up in Mint? Like, how long well, yeah, until Mint.com I mean, has that functionality? Yeah, that's a good question, down. because, like, the functions in Mint in the 90s would have been $50,000. Yeah. 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 Actually, really... It, if you still buy quick and it's just as you know, like it's hundred and whatever dollars. So yeah, you're right. It just I was rereading it and I was just like, wow. Someone uh, already said on Google Plus that they use their S Pen more now that they use OneNote. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I'm actually a fan of OneNote too. I'm starting to uh, to really like it. That was, and I don't know if it's Sachin Nadella because it was already in the works before he took over, but that was one of the smartest things is they're like, yeah, let's put Office on everything, please. That's a good idea. I'd like to see a world where Microsoft makes products like that and they just stop making Windows. Like they can make Windows Phone because it's actually not bad, but I don't want to. I don't think they should even stop making Windows, but like don't (laughs) don't make Windows their top priority. Like the business will fail if Windows fails. Um, Windows should not be too big to fail. 
We don't need a Windows bailout. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking I of just grumpy never, financial things. Yeah. I've never spent any time on Windows that I was happy. It just made me unhappy all the time. I have lovely memories of Windows 98. I really do. I, I thought it was fantastic. And Windows XP was a workhorse. I, I Windows 98 frustrated me, but I did some of my like formative web stuff on it. So I am sentimental about it. Windows XP actually worked. It just worked really well. Did it make you happy? I don't I, need my operating system to make me happy. I need it, it to can. not make me unhappy. But it can make you happy. That's the thing. No. OS ten has never made me happy. Really? Linux Mint has never made me happy. Oh, I OS Both? 10 makes me happy all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I know, guess... this, now we're peeling back the layers on what makes people like brand loyal. Yeah. Well, I, my father-in-law was in insurance, right? He was uh -huh. a bond salesman for insurance. I mean, just the seriousest guy you could have ever met in your whole life. And he'd been on Windows 98 forever, and he, and he convinced himself that he wanted a Mac. And I got him a Mac. And uh, a couple months later, I got an email from him where he said, well, I was playing around on my Mac and blah, 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 blah. And I just played it back to him. I said, you said I was playing. Uh-huh. You know, and, and the whole attitude about it had started to shift. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I used to play around on 98 all the time. JD Zeon says he's never spent any time on Mac OS that made him happy. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, different. Mm. different OS 10 has made things. me very unhappy. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yes, I will agree with that. I and Part of my problem is I went from using a Mac goodness. at work to using Vista. Oof. When they finally dragged it out of my cold, dead fingers, they gave me... I, actually, yeah. I could have gone with Windows XP, but I figured if I was going to use something, I should use something weird and unknown that nobody else knew how to use. <laughs> because when nobody was on Vista, it was... You get what you pay for. Um, yeah, no, Vista just put roadblocks in your way. It, Vista and 8 are very similar in that way to me, which is they're fine. They both worked just fine. They didn't work any worse, really, than their predecessor, except they put new things in that got your way that you had to work yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was dodging and weaving to get to where I wanted to go. Yeah. But no, my media center for years was Windows Vista machine. And it was fine because mm. I never used any of those things that were so weird on Vista. I thought 7 was fine. Yeah, 7 was I great. Didn't, I didn't 7 was my favorite I after like XP, it. probably. I didn't like it. It was fine. I mean, happy. I never I remember. To work I do remember I res when uh, Windows 95 came along and there was the My Documents folder. I resisted. I was like, I'm going to put My Documents where you tell me to put them. <laughs> I still don't on the Mac. I don't have anything in Documents. I do now. I just gave. Well, actually, I have a lot of stuff in Dropbox and stuff too, but I've, I did give up. We don't know where our stuff is anymore. Up oh, here come all the articles about Apple's iPhone 6 show under a cloud. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw the, those were starting this morning. That yeah. was the assignment desk this morning was like, how do we yeah. how, how do we keep this story alive? How do we advance it? Yeah. How do we nothing, advance it? How do we move totally. it? Yeah, move it exactly. to next week. <laughs> we need to keep this one alive until next week. And, and to your credit, Tom, the very last uh, sentence or last one of the sentences was... This is mostly about image management. <laughs> Ooh, so. wow. Apple's down to 98, 94. Bye. That's went from 103 yeah. to 99. Uh, buy on the rumor, sell on the news. Is that what they say? No. Yeah. And uh, when I say buy, I mean, see you later. And that's not stock advice because that would be irresponsible for me. To get. Yeah. I was like, the little PR company in my head was like, did that really just happen? He must mean something else. <laughs> I was like, see you later, stock price. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, uh, yeah. if I were, if I allowed myself, I guess there's nobody stopping me, but I don't buy tech stocks uh, because I cover them, but I, I would probably consider it if I did. Yeah, really, this is like, Below 100. That's like, a, that's like a 27 $28 drop. Yeah, that's a discount. That's a bargain. But do you think that's because, like, that's there wasn't a stock drop yesterday. Uh, it was today when all the articles actually started coming out about um, that actually there could be a serious security problem, not just about the photos. Like, it yeah. took the second day story if this is what it's attributed to. You know, yeah. I. 
Mac OS Ken was saying that that uh, it's normal at this point in time for it to start to drop because the the run up has been on the prediction, and mm -hmm. when it actually comes true, it's not that interesting, right? And the prediction being the phones and all that. So kind this of is this is the equivalent of uh, Christmas decorations going up in October. Like people are just like, ah, <laughs> like I'm just going to go November. ahead and sell now. I'm over it. It's November. Instead of waiting for the news. Hmm. Get out while the rush before the rush happens. Then again, he's an Apple apologist like me. So. Ah, yes. All right, Allison. I wanted to wait until you were live on the air to tell you that, yes, you will indeed be on the Apple show. Oh, even after I said you, you have were, done. You yes. Even after you were mean to me when I wasn't around to defend myself, uh, <laughs> I am putting you on the Apple show along yes. with um, Scott Johnson and <gasps> Veronica Belmont, but I have a task for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. I would really like someone who is not me on that day to just really dig into the technical specs. Oh, I yeah. Need, I mean, you could talk about anything you want about Apple, but I really need somebody to be like, okay, this is the nitty-gritty so that they could explain it to Tom's audience in a way that won't make them run for the hills. So oh, if yeah. you could consider that your specific assignment, that would be, I would be very grateful. That will be fun. Cool. Uh, Scott and Veronica, be warned that I'm, I'm going to go full nerdville. Yes, I think what we'll do is, you know, the same way that Tom's uh, headlines just sort of cover the basics of the issue, I think we will devote a, a, a segment of the discussion section to like, wow, flash, sizzle, and then we will just let you kind of run at it for a couple minutes on the tech specs. Okay, very That's cool. That's my plan. Yeah. Now it's yeah, public. Yeah. I'm all uh, I'm all nerd all over that. That's yeah. So fun. I really want the I want because I don't want to have to worry about that on Apple Day. I want to be able to get like the basic information out, but I, I want you to really dig. So that's your assignment. Should Yay. you choose to accept it? So I, I apparently passed the uh, the test by yes by, by the Samsung. Yeah, by karmically you you've karmically earned the right to be on the Apple show by handling the Samsung show. <laughs> if I'd crash them. The sad part is I spent all this time studying the phones, uh, the phone specs on Samsung and reading about the S Pen, and when I got to the VR thing, I went, ah, I don't care about that. Well, Tom did it yeah. started up on the Yeah, VR. and I'm like, the VR thing is the only thing I found interesting, which actually worked out great, because then we got a nice balance on it. So, yeah. so there you go. It has been announced. Yay. It is written. It is so it is so it shall be written if I can so do it, it shall be done. Yeah. <laughs> so let it be written. So let it be done. Uh, or it that is, is known. That is Tuesday, right? It is known. It is yes, known. that's Tuesday, September 9th. And that'll okay. be at the regular 1:30. Yep. 1:15. I was thinking this morning, Tom, as I was getting that's ready hard. about I don't do that. The fact that how much I appreciate that this show starts on time and ends on time. There are shows by friends of ours where it's like, if you didn't go potty beforehand, it's going to get ugly. <laughs> yeah, and I try to keep it. That's why I've tried to keep it at 30 minutes. I mean, we go over sometimes. We even go under sometimes. But uh, I feel like 30 minutes is about right for the, a listener of a daily show, uh, as well as a, a guest. Uh, as well as the people who work on it. I mean, the host on. and the producer. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no, I remember. Really, it, shouldn't of, everything be a half hour except for, like, Game of Thrones? I, I, I like long shows. I don't like being on long shows where you can't yeah. stop. Right. You gotcha. Know? Yeah. I mean, if for people who like long weekly shows, uh, just wait until Friday and you'll get a <laughs> lovely two and a half hour daily tech news show. There you mm -hmm. go. I did like, uh, like, uh, where Dakota UK went up to 40 minutes from 20 and that's the length of time I run. So that was really nice. Uh, but I remember I was on one of Leo's shows where, as you know, I'm always, oh gosh, I get to be on Leo's show and I'm all excited and everything. Yeah, yeah. By the third time, I was like, okay, the clock's off. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat my own arm if you don't let me go. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm out. I have been on shows like that where I like literally, I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry. I've been on conference calls like that. I haven't yes. been on shows like that, but I've been on conference calls. There was, I think I mentioned this one time. I was on a conference call for six hours, and by the end of it, I was just lying on the floor of my house, <laughs> just like Actually, I flat out on the floor <laughs> it's uh the ones that i remember most are the covering live announcements mm -hmm. oh. uh, apple's pretty good about not breaking over 90 minutes and they're usually about an hour but google and microsoft have done some death march announcements where i'm like oh my god like really still you're still going <laughs> like no one cares it doesn't matter you could announce a moon like an actual moon landing now and we'd all be like yeah <laughs> just get through it just we're done 
<laughs> it's like the teacher that talks past when the click the clock clicks up to the top. No one has ever heard what the professor has said after yeah. that click. It's just right? like I'm the out. bell rang goodbye. We're out. <laughs> All right. And speaking of the bell ringing and goodbye, we're out. Have a nice uh, trip. Thank you. I'll talk to you tomorrow one more time.